What's up everybody, I'm Lockouts, and in this video we are about to fix Season 7 Apex Legends, cause it's broken, and they don't do it. Check this out. Won't you do a favor for me? Take your mouse and click the button, won't you subscribe to me? Lockouts providing the content that you see, I'm visually stimulating your mind, one minute at a time. Alright everybody, first thing that we're going to do is get everybody's computers to be on the same page, no matter if you have a high-end computer or, you know, a potato PC or if you're playing on a laptop, it doesn't matter if you have AMD or Intel. What we're doing here is adjusting Windows settings, we're going to be doing registry settings, we're going to be doing other things within our computer, we're going to be using programs to address frame pacing and other stuff like that. This is going to help stuttering, input lag, we're going to fix packet loss issues and optimize our home internets and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go through this video as fast as I can to make it as short and painless on you and short and painless on me as I possibly can. Uh, there's going to be, you know, time links and stamps that's going to be in the video down below, so feel free to jump around in the video. There is going to be programs that you're going to have to download, and there is going to be times that you're going to have to restart your computer and come back into this, to this video right here. I have done this for every single season up to here. I've helped a couple hundred thousand people easily and I hope to be able to help you and everybody else that watches this video. So if you can help me out right now, you know, click on the little buttons, like, follow and subscribe. All right, getting into it. The first thing that we're gonna do guys is get a program. Link is down below for it. It's gonna be called Quick CPU. And when you open up Quick CPU, it looks like this right here. It's gonna be on your desktop. So click it, run it as administer. When you guys open it up, it looks like this, okay? This is the program right here and you're going to then just look at the program. You're going to look at your system power plan. You're going to select the highest power plan that you have that's going to be in this program. Then you're going to go down here to these sliders. You're gonna grab these sliders and make sure that they're all at 100%, all three of them. You're going to then click apply. You're going to close this program out. You are then going to restart your computer because it's going to insert some registry settings and stuff like that that's going to go into Windows 10 and you're going to have to restart your computer restarting it removes the old registry stuff and when you come back into windows and reboot into it it will insert the new lines of code and we'll read them them registry settings so go ahead and do that and come back into the video and we'll carry on from there all right welcome back everybody to the video and what you guys just did right there is just made sure that whatever cores that you have that's available that's inside of your computer is maxed all the way out and you're utilizing 100 percent of the cores that you have that's in your computer all right, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to enable the ultimate performance power plan. This is a hidden power setting that's within all of Windows 10. It is disabled by default. Windows comes equipped uh, with power saving modes and all kinds of stuff that's on it by default that hurts you for gaming. We are going to enable ultimate performance plan and we're going to disable a bunch of stuff that's within Windows right here. So in, in order to do this, guys, you have to be able to be on your computer as administer and you have to have access to Windows power. PowerShell and I'm going to show you that right now. So scroll down into the video and get this PowerShell command. It starts with power CFG, duplicate scheme, all these window uh, letters and numbers and all this stuff right here. You're going to copy it and after you copy it, you are then going to go down here to your little start bar right here. Uh, over the Windows icon, you're going to right click. You are going to see Windows PowerShell admin. Click that, load it up, click yes. After you click yes and all that good stuff, it's going to load up a little blue box. It looks like this. All you have to do now is just right click with your mouse. It is going to enter this little, it's going to enter what you just copied right, right there off of our command. And this is going to tell Windows to enable ultimate performance. So go ahead and hit enter. When you do that, it's going to say power scheme, GUID, all this stuff right here. And you're going to see ultimate performance. This means that it was successful. And now we can go and enable that within our Windows setting in Windows 10. So go ahead and close out of that blue box and now go down in here to your little search bar right here and you're going to type in E-D-I-T-P-O-W-E-R and when you do that you will see a green little power plug that, that pops up and looks like this. You're going to then click that power plug. What you're going to do now guys is look at the top there's going to be these little options that you can see up here and click on. One's going to say power options. I want you to click on that one that says power options. By default this is normally what it looks like. Okay, so you're going to go over here to this little drop down menu, you're going to drop it down and wherever it says 
Ultimate performance, that is the one that we just enabled that was the hidden setting that is in Windows 10. So go ahead and select that, and then you're going to go over to Change Plan Settings. After you click Change Plan Settings, it is going to pop up with this option right here. You want to turn display off, never put the computer to sleep, never. We are going for ultimate performance to remove stutter, lag, and all that stuff. We need the best performance out of our computer. Follow along with me, don't miss any of these, don't skip any of these steps right here. Click on this link, says Change Advanced Power Settings. When you do guys do that you're going to get this box that pops up and then looks like this what you guys are going to do is click hard disk you're going to open it up turn hard disk off never close that one back go to uh, desktop background settings slideshow make sure that this says paused the next one that you guys want is wireless adapter settings power saving mode setting make sure that this one right here that you select is maximum performance do not click maximum power saving make sure and double check that it says maximum performance select that one break that one back down then you guys want to go to power or uh, PCI Express you guys are going to go to link power management make sure that this setting says off turn this one off in PCI Express the next thing that you guys want is processor power management minimum maximum and system cooling policy you guys could see that I have this right here 100 on your minimum 100 on your maximum and then make sure that your system cooling policy is active what this does right here guys is if you have a guy a 5 gigahertz processor let's say and you're only just watch looking at your background on your on your desktop or watching a video on YouTube or whatever it is and you're only utilizing two or three percent of your CPU windows by default will let your CPU down clock on underneath the five gigahertz for power saving. That does not help you in FPS games when you are running around in the field in Apex Legends and you're only using 20 or 30% of your CPU. It is going to boost down underneath its maximum boost clock because it's not it's not utilizing all of its CPU performance, right? Even though you are gaming, doing this right here will ensure that your CPU stays at its five gigahertz or four gigahertz or 3.8, whatever your CPU is max, this will ensure that it stays there. If it stays at 3.8 max that will ensure that you are getting the maximum fps the higher your core clock is the more fps you are going to get in games so if you're running around in a field in apex legends and you're only utilizing 20 or 30 percent of your cpu this will let uh, what this will tell windows that hey it's not i'm not using a lot of my cpu so i can down clock underneath whatever your maximum core clock is and in turn it's going to lower your fps in games and this causes stuttering and other stuff like that so set this to 100 on both of your settings make sure that it is active this is not overclocking your cpu this is not adding any more heat or thermals or anything that is going to hurt your cpu windows by default just let your cpus down clock for power saving mode okay the next thing that you guys want is display turn display off and make sure that that one says never you guys are going to then click apply you guys are going to then click OK and then you could close out of this it is recommended right now that you restart your computer again I know that you have to restart it a lot in this in this video right here but it's going to be worth it not just for Apex Legends guys but every single other game or any other program or any video editing software or anything that it is that you do on your computer this is going to boost the performance of it and this is also going to help you a ton in Apex Legends. So just follow along with me, restart your computer, come back into the video right here, and we'll carry along. All right, and the very next thing that we are going to do, guys, is we're going to add um, R5, the or just basically the Apex Launcher, to uh, the graphics options. It's within Windows 10, and it tells Windows 10 to run Apex Legends whenever it loads up in high performance, no matter what. So you guys go down here into your search bar right here and type in graphics. G-R-A-P-H-I-C-S. When you guys see graphic settings pop up, go ahead and click on that. When you guys get the graphic settings that pops up, make sure that you click optimize games for variable refresh rate. If you have a G-Sync, FreeSync, or Adaptive Sync monitor, make sure that you turn this on right here. All right, so what you guys will do is you'll just go ahead and click on the browse button right here. When you guys click on the browse button, you will then just find wherever you guys have Apex downloaded onto your computer, you will locate the r5.exe file. And when you guys do that, you will see Apex Legends will pop up right here and look like this. You guys are going to then select it, click the options button right here, and you're gonna see three of them. So system default, power saving, or high performance. Make sure that you have the little 
tick for high performance selected. Click save, and then you can go ahead and do that for the Origin uh, launcher. You can add whatever other game that you have, World of Warcraft, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, whatever other games that you guys play, whatever it may be, whatever other programs and stuff that you use for Adobe, DaVinci Resolve, anything that's like that, uh, OBS or your Streamlabs, anything that uses you know high performance graphics settings, go ahead and locate them on your computer now and go ahead and add them in here and just make sure that they all are selected for high performance. After you guys do that, you can go ahead and click out of this and we'll carry on to the next step. All right, so by default, guys, uh, Windows 10 dis, uh, comes uh, randomly with all of everything that it possibly could do to track you and minimize your best gaming experience by default. It just comes bloated and overweight down with everything turned on. And right now, we are about to go and turn all of these things off that you do not need for Windows, okay? So what you guys are going to do right now is the very first thing is go down into your taskbar. You're going to right-click on it. You're going to see Task Manager. You're you're gonna get this to pop up. You're gonna see startup on the tab that's up here for startup. Click this one. Anything that is in here, guys, that you do not need, that is a program that is unnecessary, that starts up when you reboot your when you, when you reboot your computer, do not have them start up when you reboot your computer. It just prolongs the re rebooting or fresh starting of your computer by having all the stuff loading in the background as it's trying to boot into Windows and get itself lined out. It has to do all these other micromanagements of all these other programs to load up too, which hinders the starting and rebooting process of your computer. So disable anything that it is that you do not need. The only things that I have that is enabled is going to be my mouse's LGG hub. My uh, also controls all of my Logitech peripherals, uh, anything to do with my sound boards or anything that's like that, or anything to do with like lighting software that has to do with my computer that I want to start up. All you guys have to do for any program is just go ahead and right click on it and disable it or enable it this way also. So if you have one that's disabled that you didn't mean to, just go ahead and then enable it right there. Anything that's uh, uh, starting up that you do not want starting up with your computer, just go ahead and disable it right here. And then it will not start up all these programs as you guys are loading into Windows. The next thing that you guys are going to do is go down in here to the little start bar. You're going to bring up the, the little cog bo uh, button for settings and then get the settings button to load up. And the very first thing that you guys are going to do is click on system. When you guys click on system, you're going to get display right here. You guys are going to turn HDR off for games and apps. Uh, you know, the only time that you want this maybe is if you have a really high quality monitor with HDR and you guys want to watch a, a video that's on your monitor and you, you're utilizing that, you could turn this on and off as per usage case scenario. Um, as, a, as a regular general consensus, as a global setting, turn this off, all right? And the next thing that you guys want to do is go down into your sound and notifications, turn all of this stuff off right here for notifications, turn off your focus assistant, turn all of this off, turn power and sleep off, make sure that this says never right here, uh, go down into your multitasking, snap the windows, turn this off, your shared experiences, turn this off, clipboard, turn all, everything off there, remote desktop, definitely make sure that this one is off so that nobody can connect to your computer, notifications and actions, anything that's in here, turn it off. The very next thing that you guys are going to go to is going to be uh, devices click on devices and then you guys are going to go to your Bluetooth and other devices that you do not need that is in here remove them there's no need to have stuff in here for if you have an old keyboard that's in here just remove it if you have a, a, an old mouse that you used to have and it's still saying that it's in here remove it there is absolutely no need for you to have it autoplay leave this on this is plug and play usb make sure that this one's checked so that whenever you plug a usb in you'll know uh, pen and windows ink Click show visual effects and show cursor. And that's for your pen. That's if you have a tablet and you guys are graphic designers. If you guys are not a graphic designer and you do not have a tablet and you do not have a pen, disable this, turn all of this off. Do not have anything checked in here. A lot, I uncheck all of this stuff, okay? I only have this because I have a, 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 a graphics tablet and I do my own graphic design for my channel and everything that I do for like my webcam overlays and stuff like this. I, I have a tablet with a pressure sensor of pen if you guys do not have a tablet and you are not a graphic artist disable all this you do not need it mouse 
Make sure that you have uh, everything set up right in here, however you guys like it, and then never come back in here and touch this ever again, okay? There is no need for you to mess with anything in here with your mouse. Same thing with typing. Turn all of this off. Autocorrect misspelled words. If you want that on, sure, but if not, it just uses more resources for absolutely no reason. Highlight misspelled words. That's the only one that I have on. Everything else is off. Uh, pen and Windows Ink. Again, you know, the autoplay, the USB stuff. Make sure that most of that or anything that you could turn off is off for personalization make sure that you guys have your background as only a static picture do not have anything moving if you have a moving background that is on your desktop it utilizes computer resources on your cpu when they could be utilized for gaming or gaming and streaming or whatever it is multitasking instead of running a uh, different stuff that's on your background so turn them off all right, and going, uh, moving along, the next thing that we're going to go to is the gaming tab. Make sure that you have turn off game bar, turn off captures right here. Make sure that you have video frame rate to 30. Make sure that you have the maximum record length to 30 minutes right here. Game mode, turn game mode off, uh, or you could turn it on. This is something you can experiment as a per PC basis, depending on your computer. If you have a potato PC, you might see a little bit of a performance gain. Me, not so much. I have a Ryzen 8 core uh, 16 thread overclocked to four gigahertz and I don't see any difference with this on or off um, you you know your computers maybe be different than mine so as as per PC case scenario test this by yourself for yourself with your computer test it on test it off run a game with it on run a few games with it off and then see if you notice anything it might be placebo it might not even do anything so you know I can't tell it does anything and the next thing is Xbox uh, Xbox networking. Make sure that you have all this stuff turned off right here and Xbox is unable to connect, okay? And then go to your ease of access, turn all of this off, show animations in Windows, transparency in Windows, automatically hide scroll bars, and just show desktop background image for on. Cursor and pointer, turn this off for your visual effects. Magnifier, turn all this stuff off right here. You don't want anything selected except for smooth edges of images and text. The next thing is your color filters, turn all this stuff off narrator turn everything off in there audio speech keyboard mouse anything that has to do with anything that you can turn off turn all this stuff off in here and getting into the big stuff now okay privacy this is where you're going to see the biggest performance gain within your computer because this is the most stuff that windows naturally has turned on by default and as you can see it will when you install it in your computer just have everything enabled and you have to go in there and turn all this stuff off until windows do not do this okay so the next thing that you guys are going to do is go into the privacy setting right here click on privacy go into general turn it all off speech turn it off ink and personalization turn it off diagnostics and feedback click this one right here turn this off turn this off view diagnostic data turn this off delete everything that you possibly can frequency feedback frequency windows should ask for my feedback never and then down here for recommended troubleshooting ask me before fixing problems don't let windows auto do anything you're disabling all that auto deciding stuff and you're going to tell windows to do whatever it is that you want to do so if you want to load a game it'll load a game if you want to load a game in this that whatever it is you'll do it instead of windows doing all this stuff unnecessarily okay next thing that you guys want is location turn this off camera and microphone you guys want these enabled for you know your gaming and if you're streaming that kind of stuff voice activation turn it off notifications turn it off account info call call history email messaging radios anything to do with anything in here now i'm going to say this and pay attention Background apps, this is where you're going to see the largest out of all of this right here. Turn this off. Do not let anything run in the background. Click this and make sure every one of them are turned off. You do not want anything to run in the background unnecessarily as Windows is just running. It takes up CPU resources, which is going to hinder your gaming performance. Turn all of this off. Turn off documents, pictures, fixes, file system. Turn all that off. The only thing that you want access to is camera and microphone in here, okay? Turn all of that stuff off. You should see an instant performance gain and Windows should too feel really, really better and a lot more responsive as soon as you disable all that stuff there. All right, now moving into update and security. The next thing that you guys are going to do is go to update. Go ahead and update your computer. Make sure that you have the very latest uh, copy of Windows 10 that is installed, updated, fresh, stay up to date on this, and then go down here and just click the pause button four or five times and it'll pause it for a few weeks. Go in here in a week or two weeks and try to update your computer again, okay? Delivery optimization. Now this right here is you're going to tell Windows 10 how much bandwidth that it is able to use when it's 
doing whatever it does for its updates, all right? So click on delivery optimization, click on advanced options. When you get advanced options, I want you to tick all of these boxes and take all of these sliders and turn them all the way to the left, as low as you can. 5%, 5%, 5 gigs, okay? Turn everything down as low as you possibly can. And then you're going to go to the Windows security, your backup, troubleshoot, recovery, whatever it is that's in here. Turn all of that stuff that's off that's in there. Make sure that your computer is fully updated and now everybody's computer should be on the same page. Now what we're gonna do is go into HPET, which is high, preci high precision event timers, and we are going to disable them within Windows 10. Naturally, all newer, uh, uh, Motherboards have them on by default in your BIOS and you're not in, able to disable them within your BIOS, but you are able to disable them within Windows 10. So you want them on in your BIOS for your CPU and your GPU, your monitor, your mouse, that kind of stuff, high precision event timer, but you want them off in Windows 10. You don't want Windows 10 to have more timers and stuff like that, okay? And what we're gonna do right now is disable these high precision event timers, and then we're going to optimize our internet after this. Uh, so I'm trying to run through this as fast as I can. I know it's a long video, but bear with me. It's worth it, you know, not just for Apex Legends guys, every single program, every single game, and blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. So we'll, we'll go on from here. So what you guys are going to do right now is go down into the search bar. You're going to type in CMD. You're going to get command prompt. You're going to right click on it and you're going to run as administer. Make sure that you run command prompt as administer. For the third time, when you right click on CMD after you type it, run it as administer. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so now scroll down into the little, uh, you know, show more info part of the video right here, and you're gonna get the first uh, HPET timer. And what we're going to do is it's, or it starts with BCD edit slash platform clock, no. Okay, so you're going to copy this. You're gonna go over here into your little command box and you're going to right click it or just push right click on your mouse and it's going to, pop up right here that is pasted in there. You're then going to hit enter. I'm not going to do this because this is going to enter a registry setting into my computer. I am recording a video right now uh, and, and uh, my computer is perfect. I don't wanna mess with all this stuff. So go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna say perfect. It was successful, completed, whatever it may say, that it may, whatever it does, just make sure that it was successful, okay? And the next thing that you guys are gonna do is go down there and get the next one that says BCD edit slash uh, use platform tick yes you're going to right click copy you're going to go back to your black box you're going to right click on your mouse you're then going to hit enter it's going to say completed successful congratulations no confetti will pop out of your computer but you will disable the platform tick the next thing is going to be a possible performance gain and this is going to be dependent on your computer i have this done on my computer i don't notice anything different with mine you guys might if you have a lower end computer or if you i, I don't know it's as per pc uh some people and in the last video say that they've noticed a performance increase other people not so much so this is again dependent on your pc so go ahead and get pcd edit slash tsc sync policy enhanced right click copy it go back to your little command prompt right click on your mouse hit enter it's going to say successful completed no confetti will pop out of your computer but you did set the tsc sync policy to enhance now this is going to disable the dynamic tick for older computers potato computers and laptops bcd edit slash set disable dynamic tick yes right click copy go back to your little black box right click on your mouse hit enter on your keyboard it's going to say successful completed yay congratulations it's done you can then close out of this what i want you guys to do right now is restart your computer yes i know that you just did that but you have to do that right here what this is going to do is remove these three lines of registry edit and when you restart your computer it's going to reinsert these lines of registry edit okay so make sure that you restart your computer right now do not skip this step please right now if you just did this restart your computer okay do that right now and then come back into the video right here all right welcome back into the video guys and now what we're going to do is go ahead and jump into our internet settings and we are going to try to optimize our internet to be the best that we possibly can so that we don't have any latency issues and we get the best peak performance without fragmenting packets okay so what i want you guys to do is go down in here to the little search bar right here and i want you guys to type in ether e-t-h-e-r and you're going to get your little ethernet settings that pops up and looks like this you guys are going to click it load it up and it's going to look like this you guys are then going to click on this little status bar right here click on status when you guys get status you're going to see change adapter options click on change adapter options when you guys get 
that, uh, click on that, this little box will pop up and looks like this. I then want you to right click on this and click on properties, okay? This box is going to then pop up and you can close out the little background stuff here because you don't need it. Now this box looks like this, guys. And what you guys are going to do now is go down in here to where it says internet protocol for TCP IP fever. Select it, make sure that you click on the properties button right here. You guys are going to then click on the little dot right here that says use the following DNS server address. Now there's one of two that I recommend. One that I use personally is Cloudflare, which is this one. And the first one you're going to put in 1.1.1.1 and the alternate DNS is 1.0.0.1. And uh, you could use Google also because Apex runs on uh, Google Compute Engine servers. So you could use 8.8.8.8 or 8.4.4.8 okay and that's for the google uh, dns servers and if you want you can use google's um i use cloudfares i find cloudfare to be more consistent and i have a better ping overall and a better consistency gaming online and my online gaming uh, experience is a little bit better by using cloudfares i'm located in nova scotia canada wherever your guys's location is it might be better for you to, to use google's dns versus cloudfares Okay. And so you guys can close out all that stuff right there. And then the next thing that we're going to do, guys, is click on the little configure button that is right here. So click on configure. And after you click on configure, you guys are going to get this little box that pops up and looks like this. You're going to then see these little tabs that are on the top of it. I want you guys to click on the advanced ones. All right. What you guys are going to click right here is ARP offload. Make sure this is disabled. Enable PNE. Make sure it's disabled. Energy efficient Ethernet. Make sure that this is off. Flow control disabled gigabit master slave mode make sure that this says auto detect interrupt moderation disabled interrupt moderation rate off ipv4 checksum offload disabled jumbo packet disabled large send uh, offload for ipv4 and 6 both of these are disabled uh Let's see, the next one is log link state. Make sure that this one is enabled. Maximum number of RSS queues. I have an eight core system. I have a maximum expanded ethernet driver and stuff that's installed in this computer. Your guys might say one, your guys might say two, it might say four. Whatever the maximum amount of number of RSS queues is, guys, go ahead and select that right now. I, I usually run six on my eight core because that's more than enough uh, cores to be enabled to split the load for whatever I'm doing. So whatever your maximum number of RSS queues is, guys. Go ahead and select that right here. Uh, the next one is NS offload. Disable this. Packet priority and VLAN. Make sure that this one is enabled, okay? Uh, the next one is PTP hardware timestamp. Disabled. Receive buffers. Whatever the maximum number is that you could select right here, go ahead and put that in there. 2048. If you could put it in there, put it in there. Now I'm going to say this. If you have only 16 gigs of RAM, put 1024 in here, okay? for your receive buffers or, or yeah, put 1024 in here for, for your receive buffers and your send buffers, okay? Make sure that they say 1024. Usually you want them to be, one to be doubled from the other, but I have a better experience in Apex Legends and all the other games that I play when I set mine to 2048 on my receive and my sending buffers, my transmit. So you have a transmit buffer right here and you have a receive buffer right here. You can see that I have both of mine set at 2048. Depending on your RAM that's in your system, this uses two gigs of RAM. So, you know, I have 32 gigs of RAM, and that's why I use a lot of RAM for, for I want the best internet experience I can get. So, uh, usually, you know, if you have 16 gigs, I recommend 1,024 on your transmit and on your receive. All right, and the next thing that you guys are going to do is click uh, receive side scaling, make sure that's enabled, reduce speed on power down, go ahead and enable that because, you know, as you're turning your computer off, it'll start powering down your ethernet. I have a one gig connection and there's no need for it to be running that kind of a power link state as it's turning the computer off. So I have this enabled. Uh, uh, software timestamp disabled, speed and duplex, auto negotiation. Um, let's see here. TCP offload for four and six is disabled again. And UDP IPv4 and six is disabled. Wait for link is auto detect. Wake on link settings disabled. Wake on magic packet disabled. And wake on pattern match is disabled. Go ahead and click on OK. Go ahead and click out all this stuff. And now your internet is fully optimized to do the next step right here. 
All right, guys, so what you guys are going to do is scroll down into the comments or into the uh, more information in this video, and you're going to get this, uh, click on the link for TCP Optimizer, and you're, when you guys click TCP Optimizer, you're going to want to right-click on TCP Optimizer and run it as administer so that you can, you know, you, it needs admin privileges to be able to write these registry settings. So I'll close this out and do this again. So right-click on TCP Optimizer, run as administer, click yes, it's going to load up. TCP Optimizer is going to look like this, guys. All right. All right, guys, so this is gonna be the best thing that I could tell you for TCP Optimizer, all right? All computers, when you genuinely buy them and all of your home routers are going to have a standard MTU ratio of 1,500 or 1,500, okay? And that's going to be standard default for every single computer as they all are within Windows. Now, not everybody's computer can handle a 1,500 MTU, and what that means is this. Let's picture this being a packet, all right? This is a packet right here. Packet size is 1500. MTU means 1500. That's the transmission unit of the packet size is 1500. If your internet can only handle 1312, it's going to fragment this packet, take a part of another packet and stick it in there to that 1500, and then it's going to then split and start fragmenting packets. It's down and below it. So let's say that this computer right here, as I push W and want to go forward, it creates a packet. This packet goes from this computer to my home router. From my home router, it gets shot out, goes to my internet service provider provider from my ISP it then connects me to whatever server that I'm on an Apex Legends whatever game whatever I'm browsing on the internet okay and by default your packet size is 1500 now TCP optimizer is going to bench your connection and you're going to know if you have a good connection of 1500 if you have a 1500 on your MTU you don't have to set this and if you don't have a, a good connection of 1500 you're going to want to set it manually and what this does guys is whatever packet comes from here it does not fragment before it it hits your home router and then is sent to your ISP. You have one good fragment, one good solid packet, which means that if you have this much of a packet that's getting fragmented, this one probably will arrive, but this probably won't over here. And this might contain bits of pieces of information that might be important. We don't know. When you bench your, when you bench your computer, it's going to tell you right now if you have fragmented packets. So if you've never done this before, or if you've went to other sites and it told you, yeah, dude, you got real low jitter, your connection's awesome, no packet lost. Well, it lied to you. This right here is going to bench your settings right now. So let's go back. All right, with all that being said, here's TCP Optimizer. The very first thing that you guys are gonna do now that it's loaded is click on these tabs over here, the one that says MTU and latency. I genuinely say to use speedguide.net right here to bench off of, okay? Um, because this is Speed Guides program, so use their website to ping them. If you are in North America, United States, and Canada, okay? If you are in any other region within the world, you can click on this little button right here and click edit, and then you can click and type in like google.com, and it'll ping google.com, for instance, okay? And this uh, you, this is because not everybody is going to be able to, to ping speedguide.net depending on your location. And I've learned that over the last six seasons of recommending this to people, and there's people in Europe and India and other places, you know, Korea, Russia, uh, I mean, all over the place. The people all over the world are trying to fix this the same as we are here in North America. So I recommend speedguide.net, depending on your location. Again, you could change this for a website that is closer to you. You know, for instance, google.com, you can edit that right here. So let's uh, select speedguide.net right now. Make sure it says pings per URL is three. Packet size is going to be 32. What you're then going to do is click on largest MTU, and we're going to when you when you click largest MTU, it's going to say, please set max MTU to 1500 in order to get the correct result. Would you like to continue? I already know mine is 1312. I have a one gig fiber op connection. I have 989 down and I have 960, 958, depending on the day and the time of the day up. So I have a one gig fiber op connection. No matter what it is though, my, and I have a, and what do I have? An AC 2600 D-Link gaming router. And it has QoS, settings and all that stuff that's within it but i can only handle 1312 because of the way that i'm connected to my isp so you guys are going to be different so go ahead and just click yes and when you click yes i recommend to do this three to five times if you have a consistent number three times out of it then perfect so you can see right here it's pinged it it has fragmented packets at 1500 and it could tell you right here that you're safest so you could set your mtu is 1312 so we'll click it again and we'll run it again 
It's completed again, and we can see right here, you have fragmented packets, but at 1312, it is not fragmenting packets. We'll do it for a third time to make sure that we have consistent, guaranteed results. Guys, this is all about consistency, getting the best performance. So here's the third time, you can see again. Now, if you're getting inconsistent numbers right here, I would say do it five times. Out of that five times, take the lowest MTU number that you got out of that five times and stick with that. That means that it won't fragment that packet at, at It'll, it'll stay at the lowest amount perfect, okay? So if, if you're getting inconsistent numbers, take the lowest amount that you're getting out of the inconsistency numbers and set your MTU to that. If you did this three times and the numbers are all, all the same, let's go over here to the general settings now. What you guys are going to do is go down here to the little custom button, make sure that you select the custom one. Go up here and type in 1312 or whatever this number is that it says in the MTU and latency benchmark test. Go over here and put it in right here. The next thing that you guys are going to do is click the modify all network adapters and then just follow along with me. I'll read these off and we'll go through this real quick. Uh, the first one, I'll, I'm not even going to read it off. I'll just tell you what it is, and we'll just, just follow along so that you guys have the same settings, all right? Normal, disabled, cubic, enabled, disabled, blank, disabled, 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 disabled. Pretty simple. The next thing that you guys are going to do is click on the, oh, right here. See the slider right here, guys? Make sure it's all the way over to the right. Slider all the way over. Click it all the way, okay? Next thing that you're going to do is click on advanced settings. And I'm just going to read this right down from the left to the right. So follow along with me, all right? 10, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, disabled, 2,300. The next row, 0, default NA, disabled FFFFF, system responsiveness, gaming, 0, Disabled, one. Enabled, one. Disabled, zero. Enabled, one. Optimized, three. Max user port, 65, 534. TCP, timed wait delay, 30. Click apply changes. When you guys click apply changes, you're going to see a little box that pops up. It's going to enter registry settings. Click yes, accept them. Go ahead and close out of that program there. Then restart your computer. You guys now have a perfectly optimized um, internet connection. Come back into the video right here and we'll finish up. All right, guys, so these, these are gonna be the last two programs that you're gonna need, and or, or three. There's gonna be three programs that I'm gonna tell you to get right here. The first one is gonna be timer resolution, okay? Timer resolution looks like this right here, and what this does is it makes sure that you have the lowest amount of latency between your GPU, your CPU, your monitor, what you see that happens with your mouse, and all this stuff that happens that's within your computer. This is about the lowest amount of latency, okay, so that you can get low reaction times. You wanna make sure after we disable the HPET timer, that um, timer resolution says 0 0.500. Now, when you download this program and you install it, you're going to have to load this up manually every time that you start your computer. What I do is I start my computer and turn it on in the morning. I then go right to timer resolution, start it up, and I click maximum. And then I just minimize it and I leave it here. I do not close it again until I turn my computer off at night. I will then bring it back up. I will hit the default setting on it and then I will just close it out. So again, I start my computer up, I click maximum, I leave it open and minimized on the taskbar. It has to be open and minimized on the taskbar, okay guys? The next thing that you guys want is going to be Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, or ISLC, the links are down below. Now, if for any reason that these links are uh, disabled and they're trying to sell you these programs, these programs are free, just Google them. Timer resolution is free, just Google it. Internet uh, Intelligent Standby List Cleaner is free. Just Google it, ISLC for short. Rivia Tune Statist Statistics Sh Server is free, RTSS for short. Just Google it. If for any reason my links redirect you to a paid program, don't buy them. There's no need for them. They are free, okay? So our, um, when you guys get Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, it's going to look like this right here. And the reason that you guys are getting this one is because 
Apex Legends, when you play the game, has a problem caching the video files off of your RAM and it wants to just keep them on there and it starts creating stutter, lag, and, and you get a performance d decrease. As you guys can see right here, I have 32 gigs of RAM that's in my computer. I have a standby list right now filled with 24 gigs. I only have 80 or 80 megabytes of free RAM. I'm going to purge my standby list. I'm recording the video right now. You can see right now nothing's happening. Nothing, nothing is hurting the computer. There's no stutter and there's nothing that happened. What it did is it cached the old files for me recording of, you know, the last 24 gigs of RAM and it just took it off of my RAM. There's no need for it to be on there. And this is what it does for Apex Legends. It monitors it. So I would, uh, don't set your timer resolution here. Leave this away. Don't, don't take this box right here. Now, if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM or less, make this 2048 megabytes when your free ram is lower than 2048 if you have more than 16 gigs anybody that has more than 16 set it to 4096 again 16 gigabytes of ram or lower 2048 um 16 gigabytes of ram or more 4096 okay everybody's uh, list should be 1024 set your islc polling rate to be 250 you want this to be a very low polling rate there's no need for this to be a big hindrance on your cpu and your computer monitoring this program all you have to do then is click the start button and anytime that your ram gets below 2048 or 4096 depending on what it is that you just set this number to whenever it does that this program will automatically purge off the old ram that's in there and keep your computer from stuttering okay so go ahead and run this when you run apex legends i only use this program when i am running apex legends and i am streaming other than that i don't have a problem because i have 32 gigs of ram it never caches more than about 27 gigs uh for the whole map i get about 27 gigs it sits on my system at 32 so if you have 16 gigs of ram and you're stuttering use is I'll see this will help you if you're streaming and you're uh, playing apex legends or call of duty or any other game run islc this will keep purging your ram and keep your ram clean so that you can you know keep the new stuff going on to it all right and whenever you're done with it just click stop and you could just minimize this program when it's running and it'll sit down by your little clock and sit minimized the next thing that you guys are going to get just again the link is down below is rtss Rivia tune statistics server when you load this program up guys it's going to look like this right here there it is. All right. So now you guys are going to just uh, click on the uh, setup button, right? Or click on the add button right here. And when you guys click on add, now you're going to locate the r5.exe that is on your desktop. So go ahead and click uh, find the r5 apex that's on your desktop. Click open, and then it's going to add it in here, okay? And then what you guys are going to do is click on the r5 apex right here. Make sure that you have it selected. And then you're going to click on setup, all right? you guys click on setup i want you guys to see frame rate averaging interval i want this to be a thousand refresh period i want you to set this to a thousand wherever you want the graph to sit this is where you're going to move it on your screen okay make sure that you have the 64-bit version enabled all right click enable detected encoder service enable 64-bit application support service enable frame limiter i want all this stuff to be checked injection delay set this to 15,000. all right click ok the next thing that you guys are going to do is come over here you're going to limit your frame rate i am on a 1440 165 hertz asus monitor okay i i kept mine at 161 with g-sync enabled all right if you have a 144 hertz monitor cap your fps to 141 or 138 depending on whatever it is that you can hold stably 138 or 144 if you have a 240 hertz monitor i would recommend capping your capping it at 238 if you're on a 240 hertz monitor if you have a new 280 hertz monitor i would recommend capping it at 275 on a 280 hertz monitor that way you stay within that g-sync range up there if you have the new 360 hertz monitors i wouldn't even set a frame rate limit i would put this at zero and i would just use rtss strictly as a frame pacing program then okay scan line sync stay away from this you do not need this uh i don't need this anymore with season seven uh season seven seems to be a lot better video optimization files with the new map that is in there with olympus so again depending on where you guys are on the map is 
going to be how much frames you guys can hit and that's where you guys are going to set your limiter right here all right and then after you guys set your limiter have your application detection level to medium or high depending on your cpu of your computer you can set this to medium if you have a, a kind of a more of a potato computer if you have a higher end computer set it to high and then just minimize this and this will set and be used as a frame pacing program for apex legends and you'll get that nice smooth buttery play coupled with intelligent standby list uh, cleaner it will be purging your ram all the time and you'll get a beautiful nice gaming experience with all these programs together all right guys so i tried to go through this as fast as i possibly can i know it's a long video but it's a lot to do to be able to get our computers completely optimized and ready for top tier gaming performance and then using these programs coupled with the stuff that we just did within our computers is guaranteed to make our experience a lot better from whatever it just was that you previously experienced in apex legends so no matter if you're on a potato computer or a real high-end computer you are going to see performance gains you're going to get a, a better experience with an apex legends again you know it's, it's going to be dependent on your computer for how much performance you actually gain within the uh, uh, gain within the game or within your system in general but hopefully this helps every one of you guys out no matter what kind of computer that you're on whether it's intel or amd and uh you know i need all you guys to help me out because it's been a long video so you know click all the little buttons help a fellow out lock like follow subscribe you know share this with your friends do whatever you got to do Get everybody's computer to be on the same page the more people that we help and we have better optimized computers the better that our experience is going to be with all of our teammates that we plug into and everything around the game because you know building a community of just better performing computers is going to get everybody aiming better in the game because you have you know the better stable consistency in your frame so again help me out click all the little buttons like follow subscribe i hope this helped all you guys out for season seven apex legends i'm lockout Peace. Won't you do a favor for me? Take your mouse and click the button. Won't you subscribe to me? Doc out for buying the content that you see. I'm visually stimulating your mind one minute at a time.